Still solid at 832, could get to 902 within the hour, so hold steady. Anything above 11 2, and I am not in. Okay, yes, uh, Euston 1635, and yes, uh, that is it, unless you can throw some stuff. Stephen. Uh, Bradford Unchanged, what about the early Newcastle? No, maybe not 23 and 42. Stephen, could I have a word? Yeah, Sterling's gone! Sterling has gone! Gone! But Bristol is still available on rooms of the Coventry expansion. Yeah, that's sure, what is it? I uh, don't know who the players are on this one, so just keep an eye on it, okay? Stephen, I know yeah, Intercity yeah, are yeah, taking yeah. a far more business like approach to the market these days, but there's no need to go totally yeah, over yeah, the top. Yeah, yeah, We're only yeah, a high street yeah, travel yeah, agent. Yeah, yeah, We're here oh, to sell yeah, tickets yeah, to the yeah, general yeah, public. Sorry, 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 did you say sell? Yes, of course. You've not been buying rail tickets, have you? Ah, well, just a few. How many? Uh, well, I'm into the executive ticket and sleeper reservation market so far, but I've almost cornered the intercity leisure market. You've done what? How on earth are you going to shift them? Sell Saver, Sell Day Return, Sell First Class, Sell Standard, Sell Young Person's Rail Cup, Sell Gatwick Express, Sell, Sell, Sell Pullman, yes, Sell the Lock, Sell, Sell, Sell! Intercity sells 20 million Saver tickets and a quarter of a million family rail cards a year. That's why in the months ahead, Intercity is going out of its way to help and encourage these leisure travellers. I have with me Robert Mason, Marketing Director for Intercity. Robert, what are the priorities for the year ahead? We operate in a very commercial environment. Competition this year for customers is going to be greater than ever. We never forget that our customers have a choice as to whether to use us or not. Our priorities for this year is to get the train service right, the quality of service right, and to make sure the price is right. Looking at those priorities, what do you mean by getting the train service right? Well, for 1990, we've our best timetable ever. We've more trains at the times that people want to travel. We've got faster trains, for instance, um, under two hours between Leeds and London, and more frequent trains for instance, hourly services between Liverpool and London. And we've now nearly finished the refurbishment of the interiors of all of our coaches. How do you intend to improve the quality of service to customers? As a service company, the quality of the service that we provide for customers is of paramount importance to us. We've been concentrating on staff training for our on-train staff, our catering staff and senior conductors, and also for our retailing staff. You mentioned getting the train service and the quality of service right, but what about the prices? Yes, there's no point in getting the train service right and the quality of service right if at the end of the day our customers don't buy the product. We have to get the right balance between an attractive price for the customer and our needs to cover our costs, and where we've got an attractive price to communicate it in the best way possible. It's in this area of price that major changes are planned to two of our main products. And which products are these? They're two of our most important products, savers and family rail cards. Changes to these popular products are not entered into lightly. We've carefully researched the market, and these changes will be implemented this May. <laughs> This really is something. Lizzie, Lizzie. Just look at the boldness, the sheer simplicity of it. You're right. It's got none of the complication of the earlier work. Such dramatic use of colour. Just simple, solid blocks of red, white and blue. And yet it's so easy to comprehend. Why, well, it's so simple even a child could understand mm. what it's trying to say. What's it called? Mm -hmm. Your travel guide from London to Birmingham from May 16th, 1990. Mm. Apparently it's part of a major new series. Dean Fitzpatrick, good morning. Good morning. Tell us just why savers are so important to Intercity. Savers have always been important to Intercity, ever since we introduced them in 1985. Sales have grown each year, so much so that last year, Saver sales accounted for a third of our total revenue. All the same, though, they have faced some criticisms that they're difficult to understand. So there have been problems, haven't there? Yeah, that's right. Um, it's fair to say that some of our customers find them complicated to understand, and some of our staff find them complicated to issue. Just because we've sold so many, it doesn't mean that they're perfect, and we're looking at ways to improve things, because if we do improve things, that'll mean more satisfied customers and more money for us as a business as a result. Well, what makes them so complicated? 
Savers are designed to earn us money in the very price-sensitive leisure market. We're not alone in doing this. Airlines, ferries, they both offer the same sort of um, discounted fare structure, and their systems are as complicated, or perhaps more complicated than ours are. But we have to be careful. We don't want to put at risk our full fare business revenue because that wouldn't make sense. Equally, we don't want to compromise the quality of service that we offer by attracting too many people onto our services, particularly at peak times. So it's a very fine balancing act, and uh, maybe we've tried to be too sophisticated in the past. We're looking to see if we can improve things. So what are you going to do to make it simpler, not only for the general public, but also for the booking office staff? Well, firstly, we're going to change the names of the products. Presently, um, the names that we have, they don't give any indication of which ticket is more expensive, which ticket is cheaper, and they don't give any, any real indication of which ticket is our unrestricted ticket type, the present standard return. So we're looking at ways of actually indicating through the names both the hierarchy of prices and the fact that the unrestricted ticket type is an unrestricted ticket. And what are they? Well, firstly, we have the open return. That replaces the present standard return. There's no actual changes to when the ticket can be used. It can still be used on any train, any day, for outward and return travel, as long as you make the journey within a month from the date shown on the ticket. In the colour-coded charts that we introduced last year, that means that that ticket can be used on all trains that are shown as red, plus, of course, all trains that are shown as white and blue. Well, secondly, we're introducing the saver return. That'll be our new flexible leisure ticket. Um, it can be used on a wide variety of outward services and for travel on any train, any day for return travel, an important new benefit. Um, on the colour-coded charts, once again, th that ticket will be able to be used on all trains that are coloured white and blue. And finally, Super Saver. This will be the lowest cost leisure fare that we offer. It will still be available on a wide variety of outward and return services. On the colour-coded charts that we introduced last year, it will be available on all trains that are coloured blue. Well, that seems simple enough. We have the open return, the saver, and the super saver. But surely the improvements, and therefore the changes, go further than this. That's right. With the new name changes, and also with the colour-coded um, timetables that we introduced last year, we're now in a position to actually change when the tickets can or cannot be used. From May, savers will be restricted only in the outward direction of travel. As far as return travel is concerned, they'll be able to be used on any train, any day. And this is a very important new benefit that we've not actually be able to, been able to push before. Super savers will still have restrictions on both the outward and the return direction of travel. But I'd like to stress they'll still be available on a wide variety of services. Are there going to be any areas where there aren't any changes? Yes, there are. On journeys from London and on non-London journeys, such as, for example, Birmingham to Manchester or Liverpool to Leeds, there'll be no changes whatsoever, apart, of course, from the name changes that we've just gone over. On journeys to London, there will be three main changes that we'll be introducing in May, and our customers will experience at least one of these changes, depending upon the type of journey that they're making. Firstly, on most long-distance journeys to London, like Newcastle or Manchester to London, the red trains, and these are the trains on which you need an open return to travel at present, will be removed completely for return journeys. Secondly, on medium distance journeys to London, such as Birmingham or Bristol to London, the red trains will be replaced by white ones. This will mean that on certain trains, savers will be able to be used for return travel, but super savers will not. The important thing to stress is that both of these changes will mean the elimination of a wide range of restrictions on return travel. Finally, also on a few medium distance journeys to London, such as, say, Birmingham to London, there will be white trains in the outward direction of travel on all weekdays in the morning peak. Savers can be used on these trains, but super savers cannot. The reason we're making this change is to try and actually reduce the level of crowding on the first unrestricted train, which happens presently. This all still sounds a bit complicated to me. Isn't this a bit much to take in all at once? Yes, but don't forget, you're seeing the whole picture. Our customers will only be concerned with one set of restrictions as it applies to them for any particular journey, not the whole picture. I understand the colour-coded charts have already been tried out. Yes, they have. In fact, we've tried them out on 12-year-old school children. Um, we wanted to check to see if they could understand it, 
and they could understand them very well to find the right fare for any particular journey that we were asking them to undertake in the imaginary test that we set. Uh, let's look at number four. You travel out from Birmingham at 16.11 on a Sunday, travel back from London at 18.10 on a Tuesday. What would the fare be, Scott? About 41 pounds. How did you calculate that? And it didn't take them all day to do it? Not at all. Well, hopefully there won't be any problems there then. But what about the trains, Dean? After all, if you're making travel on savers and super savers less restricted, isn't there more risk that travellers won't get a seat? No, in fact, the opposite. Um, presently, because of the restrictions that we have, our customers are often forced to travel when we want them to rather than when they want to themselves. By making these changes, it will actually spread the overall level of demand and the level of crowding will decrease as a result. So all in all, it should be a much better scheme. How are you going to tell people about it? All people involved in dealing with our customers, whether they're selling tickets or alternatively checking tickets on train, will receive full details of the change in a staff merchandiser that they'll receive by the end of April. Additionally, all our travel agents will receive a visit from a sales executive on top of receiving the merchandiser to make sure that they're fully aware of all the changes as they affect them. Finally, and most importantly of all, our customers, they will receive all information in relation to the changes in a national press campaign that will be running in May. We want everybody to get the message loud and clear. Can you just summarise that message for us? Yeah. We'll be pushing our value for money fares, that with the new colour coding, the new brand names and the easing of restrictions, it will make it easier for customers to travel by train and for retail staff to issue tickets and both of those things can only be good for business and the final thing that i'd like to emphasize is that we're not making these changes for changes sake we've been listening to our customers we've asked them what changes they wanted us to to make and this is the result dean thank you very much <laughs>